Hello, I'm Willie George. I want to welcome you to this edition of the Faith Roots Podcast. And we're talking this month about prayer in the Spirit. And uh, one of the most important subjects in the New Testament as far as I'm concerned. This is uh, something I do all the time. And uh, I want to share with you some secrets that I believe will help you in your relationship with God and with the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jude 20, New English Bible says this, but you, my friends, must fortify yourselves in your most sacred faith. Continue to pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Praying in the Holy Spirit builds us up on faith that we already possess. In other words, praying doesn't give you faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Scripture is very clear about that. So you can't pray to get faith. Praying in the Spirit will strengthen that faith and build you up on it and fortify it. And and the idea here is that uh, we are learning to better use something that we already have. And this idea that faith comes by hearing, I want to show it to you in the book of Acts chapter 14. Here's the apostle Paul. He's on a missionary trip. And this is Acts 14, 7. And they were preaching the gospel there. And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking Uh, Paul, observing him intently, and now listen to this, seeing that he had faith to be healed. Now that's a gift of the Spirit. That was the gift of of, uh, the word of wisdom. He saw into the future and saw into the condition of that in his heart. He saw faith in his heart. That's amazing. And And he said with a loud voice, stand up on your feet. Stand up straight on your feet. And man did. And he leaped and walked. Now, it's fascinating to me that Paul didn't ask God to give the man faith. He didn't pray beforehand. God give this man faith. He saw that the man had faith. Now, this man is a stranger to Paul. He just happens to be in the street there, and he can't move or go anywhere because he can't walk. Paul is preaching, and as Paul looks toward the man, he sees something in the man spiritually that says he's got faith. So Paul recognized that, and he said, stand up right on your feet. Why would Paul be that bold? Because he knows how this whole thing works. He is expecting people to have faith because he is preaching the Word of God. And that's how you build faith. If you want to build somebody's faith, you give them the Word of God. You want to build your own faith, you give yourself the Word of God. Now, after you have that faith, after you receive it, you can pump it up. You can... Listen, uh, I used to work out with weights a lot and a long, long time and uh, did it for years and years and years and years. And I went, I went radical working out with weights. Just, just, I I was so competitive. Anytime I went to the weight room, I was looking around the room, see the strongest guy was. He didn't know it, but I was competing with him and I was determined I was going to bench press more than the guy who was in the gym that looked like he was really strong. So I'm really building up like this. And then I would lay off for a little while. Here's what I was amazed by. I would lay off sometimes eight, nine years, but I would go back in the weight room, and in a matter of 35, 40 days, I'm back as strong as I was at the peak of my life. And and, and it was muscle memory. The muscles were still had memory in them. They were able to just jump right back into what I had gained, what I'd had before. And and so that's what the Holy Spirit does. It's in effect, he, he takes advantage of what we have put into ourselves before and brings that to maximum performance. That's what praying in the Holy Spirit does. He gets you back on top of your game. Now you can't get there if you don't have faith to begin with. He doesn't put faith in you apart from the Word of God. But once you have that faith by the Word of God, He brings you back to it. Now listen to what Jesus had to say to Simon Peter about faith and the hour of testing that was about to come on him. This is the book of Luke chapter 22 and two verses 31 and 32. This is just before Jesus goes to the cross. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, talking to Peter, Indeed, Satan has asked for you. And Jesus could only have known this by the power of the Holy Spirit. Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. 
So Satan had a plan for Peter's life. But listen to what Jesus said. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Now, Jesus didn't say to Peter, Peter, I have prayed for you for God to give you faith. I have prayed for you, for God to give you faith for this really big battle you're about to face. That isn't what uh, Jesus said. He didn't pray for God to give Peter faith. Peter already had faith. What Jesus was praying is that the faith would be enhanced. It would be brought back. It would not fail. That's what he was saying, and that's exactly what happened. The faith that Peter already had was re-energized. It came back. He came back in strength. And by the way, when did this happen to the greatest degree? It happened on the day of Pentecost when Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. And I can tell you what he was doing. He was praying in other tongues, praying in the Spirit, and this helped to energize his faith. Now, the faith that we have is God's faith. It's not our own. Mark eleven twenty two, 22, when Jesus cursed the fig tree and was teaching his followers a, a lesson on faith, this is what he said literally in Mark eleven twenty two. This is in the margin of my Bible. Have the faith of God. In, uh, most Bibles will say have faith in God, but literally meaning have the faith of God because all faith comes from God. It's God's faith. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author or the beginner and finisher of our faith. Now, and there's a reason I want to point this out. Uh, a lot of people don't believe in their own faith. They don't have faith in their faith. They have a lot more faith in their doubts than they do in their faith. But when they have faith in their doubts, the thing that they're not realizing is that the faith that you have is a gift from God. This is potent stuff. Don't put it down. Don't diminish it. Don't look at it as though it's nothing. Faith from God is amazing. And, and here's where a lot of people get in trouble. A lot of people get in trouble by not recognizing how faith works, and they're thinking mainly about quantity. Jesus said, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, there's a reason that he picked the mustard seed. It's because a tiny little seed. So it, it, it isn't the quantity of faith. It's the operation of faith. In, in other words, he wasn't saying, if you had just this much faith, that's not what Jesus was talking about. He was not talking about quantity. Quantity had nothing to do with it. He was saying, if you can learn to plant a seed and let that seed go in the ground and do its work, you'll be blown away at what it brings up. It is empowered by God. God created that seed to produce amazing things. And a mustard seed is an herb that grows higher than any of the herb, herbs in the garden. And so Jesus used it as an example. Now, when you get into a battle and you are facing challenges, it's very much like what happens when you plant that mustard seed. When that mustard seed goes in the ground, the dirt that's on top of it outweighs it by a hundred times, maybe a thousand times, but doesn't matter. The mustard seed has the power to overcome all of that darkness. And out of the darkness, here comes that little shoot and it comes up. That is the potency of your faith. And that's what happens when you pray in the Holy Spirit. When you pray in the Holy Spirit, the faith that you already have is energized. It is maximized. It is fortified. You know, I remember when I was a kid, they had milk commercials and vitamin commercials, and they were always teaching about this fortifies your bones. That doesn't mean you're getting new bones. The Bible says that we are fortified in our faith when we pray in the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean we're getting new faith. We don't get new bones when we drink milk that fortifies our bones. The bones that we already have are strengthened. And that's what praying in the Spirit does. It turns your faith to maximum strength. It's already there, but your faith becomes energized and alive and potent. That's why it's so important to pray in the Holy Spirit. Oh my goodness, I wish I had more time to talk about this, but we're getting near the end of our time today. But we're going to pick up here tomorrow because this is too important a subject just to drop off. Awesome.